Hey guys, in this video we will be looking at all the chemical reactions of alkenes. We have a total of 6 reactions. So please stay tuned until the end. Let's get right to the first one. So as a hydrocarbon, alkenes can undergo combustion. Of course, the combustibility of alkenes will decrease as the length of the chain increases. As it becomes bigger and bigger, the combustibility will decrease. So when alkenes undergo combustion, just like all hydrocarbons, they will produce only carbon dioxide and water. However, there's a condition to this. This is in excess oxygen, when oxygen is in excess. So we only get these two products, carbon dioxide and water. However, when oxygen is not enough, when there's not enough supply of oxygen to support the combustion, what happens is we have some other products as well, such as carbon monoxide. So carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas. And then we can also get carbon, carbon in the form of soot. So if you see black smoke, that is where we have soot. The soot is actually just carbon. Alkenes tend to produce more soot compared to alkanes of the same carbon length. This is because they have a higher percentage of carbon by mass. I'll cover that in another video. By the way guys, if you need an introduction to hydrocarbons, I have a video on that too. I'll leave the link in the description below. Do check it out. Now let's go on to the second reaction. So the second reaction is actually a group of reactions. There's a group of five reactions here. And they are called the addition reactions. So alkenes are special because they are unsaturated. Unsaturated hydrocarbon means not all the carbon-carbon bonds are single bonds. There can be double bonds or even triple bonds. So in this case, you can see very clearly here, we have a carbon-carbon double bond, CC double bond. So this is an unsaturated compound. Because alkenes are unsaturated, they can undergo addition reactions. So if you look at this arrangement of the molecule, you can imagine it as having space for other atoms to come in here because of the carbon-carbon double bond. It has more space for other atoms to approach the carbon. So that is exactly what is going to happen. What happens is another molecule such as this. So let's bring this molecule closer. So what happens is through a series of steps, this single bond between the two atoms would break. This double bond would break and it will form two new single bonds with the atoms that are added in. So at the end of the day, we end up with this molecule instead. So this is how addition reaction works. The carbon-carbon double bond will break and there will be a carbon-carbon single bond and two new bonds will form with the atoms that are being added. So there are many things that can be added to alkenes. We are going to look at four things that we add to alkenes and one more special addition reaction. So let's go to the first one. First is addition of hydrogen. So the name is very easy. When you add hydrogen, the process is called hydrogenation. Okay, so let's see what happens. So when we add hydrogen, this alkene is ethene because there's two carbons. So ethene plus hydrogen, what's going to happen is we are going to break this CC double bond and there will only be a single bond and we are adding hydrogen. So we have two hydrogen atoms here. These hydrogen atoms will be added here, H and H. So at the end of the day, if you look at this molecule, this is actually an alkene because there's only CC single bond and there's two carbons here, so this is an ethane molecule. So when we add hydrogen to alkene, what we get is alkene. And this is the general reaction. So when we write it, what we have done here is written it in a structural formula. We have used the structural formulas for the equation because this is easier to imagine. Now, if we were to write it as a chemical equation like this, using the chemical formulas, then the general formula of alkene is CnH2n. When we add two hydrogen, so you get CnH2n plus two because we are adding two hydrogen. That's all. So this works for any alkene. Let's look at uh, propene. Let's try propene. So propene will be C3, three carbons, and then H6. So when we add hydrogen plus H2, what we will get is C3H. So N is 3. 2N plus 2 will be 8. So this is what happens when we have hydrogenation of Propene instead of ethene. 
Hydrogenation is actually a very useful process. It is used in the production of margarine from vegetable oils. However, this reaction does not occur spontaneously. It occurs under specific conditions. And one of it is the presence of a catalyst. So the catalyst for this reaction, remember the catalyst for each reaction is specific. So for this reaction, we can use either nickel or platinum. And it also requires a high temperature of 180 degrees Celsius. So these are the conditions required for this reaction to take place. The second addition reaction is reaction by addition of halogen. When we add halogen, again, the name of the process is very simple. You add halogen, the process name is halogenation. So let's look at this example here. Again, let's start with ethene. So when we add chlorine, chlorine is the halogen here, these two atoms are going to be added here. So once again, the process is the same. What we do is, we break the CC double bond, leaving just the CC single bond. We add two new single bonds. And now we just add the atoms of whatever we are adding. In this case, we are adding the halogen. So we add the two chlorine atoms here. Chlorine atom and chlorine atom. There we go. Now, this compound is called 1,2-dichloroethane. If you are wondering about the 1,2, this has to do with structural isomerism. I also have a video on that. I'll leave it in the description as well. You can take a look at that. So it is dichloroethane. Di because there's two chlorine. Now this compound is generally known as a haloalkane. The halo is for the halogen part and the alkane is for the base structure. The base structure here is actually an alkane because we only have CC single bonds here. So this is a haloalkane. So the general reaction when we write it using chemical formulas is like this. We just add the halogen. So again, this is a very simple process because all in addition, all we are doing is we are adding atoms to the original alkene. So you start off the product by writing the formula of the original alkene and then you just add the halogen at the back. That's all. This is the general reaction. Now let's go to the third addition. We have added hydrogen and we have added halogen. Now we are going to add a combination of the two and that is addition of hydrogen halide. So this process doesn't have a special name. It is just addition of hydrogen halide. So what happens when we add hydrogen halide? Let's take a look at an example of hydrogen bromide. So Hydrogen bromide, the bromide is a halide here. What happens when we add hydrogen bromide? It is the same process again. All addition reactions happen the same way. We just remove the double bond and leave it as a single bond. And then two new bonds are going to form with whatever we are adding. In this case, we are adding hydrogen and bromine atoms. So this is H and BR. So there we have it. This is haloalkane. So the addition of halogens and hydrogen halides for alkenes is spontaneous. This reaction takes place by itself. There's no special condition needed for these two reactions. So let's move on to the fourth type of reaction. This time we're going to add water. So when you add water, the process is known as hydration. Again, the name of the process is easy to remember. Hydration, addition of water. So what happens when we add water? So this time, we draw the water molecule as H and OH because this is exactly how it is going to be added into the alkene. So let's look at what happens here. As always, Let's break the CC double bond, break the CC double bond into a CC single bond. Then we add two new bonds and these bonds are going to be with one hydrogen atom and one hydroxyl group. So this OH here is known as the hydroxyl group. Hydroxyl group is actually the functional group of alcohols. That is why an alcohol is formed. So what we get here is ethanol. So this is alkene plus water, we get alcohol. So the general reaction is like this. So we have CN, H2N plus H2O. Again, addition reactions are very simple. All we have to do is add. So from H2N, since we are adding one hydrogen, so remember we are adding it as HOH. So we've added one hydrogen, so it becomes 2N plus 1 and then the OH. We leave the OH like this because it's very clear to see what the functional group is. 
This is why we don't combine the last H together here. We normally don't do that. So it is clear to us what type of compound this is. Hydration is another very useful reaction because this is used in the industry to make alcohol. Alcohol production is through hydration of alkenes. This reaction also does not occur spontaneously. There are certain conditions needed for this reaction to occur. So the catalyst in this reaction is phosphoric 5 acid, H3PO4. This reaction also requires a high temperature and high pressure. So this reaction occurs at about 300 degrees Celsius and 60 atmospheres, 60 times the atmospheric pressure. The fifth addition reaction is a bit different from the rest because when you cannot see the atoms being added directly. So this is actually an oxidation process. It is the oxidation of ethene using, or any alkene, using an oxidizing agent. Here we are using acidified potassium manganate 7 solution. So in this case, what happens is, we add the solution. The solution contains water, H2O, and you can see this strange one here, oxygen in a square bracket. So this actually represents the oxygen that is coming from the oxidizing agent. So this is a very complicated mechanism. We're not going to look at the whole mechanism. We're just going to look at the general reaction. So this is from KMnO4. Potassium manganate 7 solution acidified. So we go H plus. And this is what happens. Once again, the double bond breaks. CC double bond breaks. This is still an addition reaction. So the double bond breaks and we form two new single bonds. Now the problem is, what do we add here? So in this case, actually it is a combination of all of this. So if you look carefully, we have two O's and two H here. We have two oxygen and two hydrogen. So what is being added at the end of the day is actually two hydroxyl groups. So we have OH and OH. Since we have hydroxyl groups here, this is an alcohol and this is 2 carbon alcohol so it is ethanol. However, we have to be careful with the naming here because there are two hydroxyl groups. So when there are two hydroxyl groups, we actually call it ethane 1, 2, diol. It is a diol because we have two hydroxyl groups. So this is what is formed when we have addition reaction by oxidation with acidified potassium magnate 7 solution. So here it is worth noting that the observation that we will see is potassium magnate 7 solution is a purple color solution. When it reacts and it is no more there, then the solution will become colorless. So the observation that we will get from this reaction is the solution turns from purple to colorless. So again, as with all addition reactions, this is very simple. All we have to do is take the original alkene, copy it back down. So remember, what we added in the end of the day was two hydroxyl groups. So we have OH bracket 2 representing the two hydroxyl groups. This reaction is also spontaneous. It doesn't need any special condition to occur. So out of all the five addition reactions, only two need special conditions. That is hydrogenation and hydration. These two require special conditions. The rest occur spontaneously. So we have gone through combustion and we have gone through addition reactions. The third type of reaction is actually polymerization. So alkenes can undergo addition polymerization. Why we call this addition polymerization is because we have another type of polymerization known as condensation polymerization. But when we are dealing with alkenes, it is addition polymerization. So with addition polymerization, what is polymerization? Polymerization is the formation of a long chain molecule from smaller units, smaller molecules known as the monomers. When monomers combine together, so you can imagine it like beads of a chain. When you take beads of a chain and you put them together, you put many beads together, then we have one long chain of beads. So this is the same process. Each bead represents a monomer. The whole chain is known as the polymer. So let's look at this. When we add ethene, many molecules of ethene together, what is going to happen is, so let's look at what happens here. Once again, the CC double bond will break. So you can see how important the CC double bond is for all the reactions here. That is why 
it is very reactive because it is unsaturated because it has the CC double bond. So the CC double bond breaks and it forms a single bond with the neighboring carbon from another ethene molecule. So at the end of the day, it's going to keep joining and joining and joining and joining and form one long chain like this. So there's more here and more here. So this is known as polythene. This is short for polyethene. Many ethene join together, we get polythene. For the general reaction, we normally use the structural formula. So this is what we get. When you have many ethene molecules together, so here we have n number of ethene molecules, then what we get is polythene, the polymer with n number of molecules joined together. All that's different here is we have a CC single bond here, we have a CC double bond here. So as you can see, the number of carbons and the number of hydrogens are exactly the same. So these are the seven reactions, chemical reactions of alkenes. We have combustion and we have the five addition reactions. And finally, we have addition polymerization. If you've learned something from this video, guys, please do help me and hit that like button because it really does help to grow the channel. So thank you for doing that. And if you enjoy videos like this, please do subscribe. I'll be producing at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.